Right. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you can hear me and also see my presentation. Anke, in my view, I have the, the slideshow, not the full screen. Yeah, yeah, wait, let's see. Let's change that. Now it should be fine. Yes, it's fine. Perfect. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to talk to you about NMAP, the German Space Bond Imaging Spectroscopy Mission. Um, most likely, most of you already heard about the mission, and I'm quite happy to present also on behalf of the DLR and all of my colleagues, um, basically the newest update uh, and some ongoing activities. Um, following, of course, uh, Marcus and Jenny's really nice talk about CHIME, uh, and I think we are all really excited that the hyperspectral community is, is growing so much. So NMAP is an environmental mapping and analysis program. It's the first space-borne hyperspectral uh, German mission. It aims to monitor and characterize the Earth's environment on a, let's say, local to regional scale, but covering the entire globe. Uh, it serves to measure and model key dynamics and uh, processes of the Earth's ecosystem. And it is designed as a scientific pathfinder mission but um, when designing the mission, they also thought about a later operational, um, for later operational services, which I think is quite um, important also in preparation to CHIME. NMAP is, is a push broom imaging spectrometer with a spectral range from 400 to 2,450 nanometers with more than 260 bands. It has a ground sampling of 30 meters and a swath of 30 kilometers, um, which is, I think you're quite familiar with when you're familiar with Prisma and also thinking about um, CHIME uh, key parameters. Uh, we have a revisit time of 27 days when we having the um, sensor pointed at Nadir and at least uh, four days when we use the maximum across track pointing of 30 years. The mission lifetime of NMAP is five years and the sensor left uh, OHB a couple of weeks, no, almost two months ago now, um, and is at the ERBG now for its final environmental uh, test campaign, which was uh, succe successfully finished. I think last week, and now we are having a look at the latest calibration um, from, the, from the whole satellite. And the satellite is not going back to OHB, but when all the testings are finished, it's going to the launch site. So everything is prepared for launch in um, first quarter of 2022. Uh, NMAP, um, has the main applicational fields of uh, monitoring vegetation and ecosystems, uh, going from plant stress to covering crop residuals or um, plant composites. Uh, due to its um, key parameters, it's very um, useful also for soil mineralogy uh, and covering soil texture, and of course, um, geology, geological applications, everything from mining to exploitation and uh, restoration of uh, geological sites. Um, it's designed to um, track environmental pollution, um, giving an idea about water quality. And um, even though it has a 30 meter resolution, <clears throat> it can also be used for urban areas. The NMAP project is structured in the following way. So uh, the project management is with the DLR Space Agency in uh, Oberkassel. Um, the space segment is with OHB and the ground segment is with the DLR Oberpfaffenhofen. Uh, from the beginning of the mission, we uh, established a scientific uh, PI, which is with the GFZ in Potsdam. Um, and we are having also an MNPI project which is supported, um, so which supports the GFZ um, 
from different uh, scientific universities, for example, the LMU in um, Munich or also the AVI in, uh, also in Potsdam. So um, the PI, scientific PI gets a good support also for the upcoming phase, uh, the commissioning phase to have a proper Calval team on hand. Um, <clears throat> we have an, an international um, science advisory group, the ENSEC, which supports uh, from the one side uh, the GFZ and also the um, DLR Space Agency for all scientific questions which arise. And this group was uh, just restructured in a Calval group and an application group um, to be well prepared for the upcoming commissioning phase. And we also have, uh, for example, a uh, Prisma representative in this group to also ensure the cooperation between different um, also hyperspectral um, communities. Uh, NMAP had a quite long development phase. So we took the opportunity to uh, install a very wide mission exploration program which has the uh, different pillars. So having a lot of research um, projects, uh, we took care about education and training of really young scientists. We put a lot of in, uh, effort into algorithm and application development and um, mission support and also community building. Um, Within my talk, I will concentrate on some of the pillars and give you an idea about what was what was done there. Um, even though we have many more activities, but I think uh, those might be most interesting for for this uh, community. What was done in respect to uh, the research and the uh, science preparation of the mission? Well, since um, more than uh, 10 years, um, the DLR funded a lot of science uh, projects um, from postdoc projects to also PhD projects. I think in, uh, in total, we had more than 30 PhD programs. Um, and those scientific programs were in the main fields of application. So basically from uh, forest to natural ecosystems, um, investigating how hyperspectral data can be used for coastal and inland waters. Um, also vegetation function was studied and all the, the results of this uh, science projects can be found on the NMAP homepage. Um, there you can have a look what was already done. Um, uh, what's interesting for you, maybe find scientists you want to collaborate with. Um, also now we are entering a new funding phase. We just received, I think over 30 proposals from uh, German universities and also small value adders. Um, the projects will start the beginning, with the beginning of next year, um, basically with the launch of, um, with the launch of NMAP. Um, so we are continuing also this um, scientific support of the hyperspectral community. Um, as I already said, we have uh, established, uh, due to the mission support, the um, scientific advisory group um, with a validation working group, which now, of course, is working mainly on the product validation plan and an application working group. Um, if you want to have a look at the new members, please also have a look at the NMAP homepage. Um, also, in uh, preparation of the of the mission support, we of course um, within those different science projects had a lot of um, flight campaigns and data which were already um, recorded. All those data, including a good um, technical report about how the data were. Um, measured how the ground reference data were established, all the protocols uh, can be found on the NMAP campaign portal, which is also available on the NMAP homepage. The data are free for the whole community. So in case you're interested, uh, just browse around and have a look. 
And we also have the possibility and offer the possibility to the, uh, to the science community um, that you can have simulated NMAP data um, that is developed uh, or that is uh, calculated from an end-to-end -end simulator, which is uh, well, was developed by the GFZ, the Science PI. Um, many simulated MLAP data are already available on the NMAP uh, homepage, but there's also the possibility in case you have uh, new flight data and would like to have uh, simulated NMAP data from that, to contact Karl Segel directly, he will uh, provide those data for you. As just mentioned, we are currently working on a, a NMAP product validation plan for level one and level two data, um, setting up a, a large protocol on different uh, Kalwald sites. Um, the GFZ is also responsible for that. Um, and we are making a quite good progress for that and just preparation, we're just preparing all the um, measurement protocols for the commissioning phase. One big pillar in this uh, mission exploitation program was the development of the NMAP box, which is a, a tool for visualizing and um, processing and analyzing NMAP data. Um, it's a free and open source software from uh, as a QGIS plugin. And uh, since a couple, oh, two years already, it's an official plugin for QGIS. So um, in case you download QGIS, you automatically also download the NMAP box. Um, the NMAP box targets multiple groups. So everyone from really starting with imaging spectroscopy to already really advanced users, which basically code their own workflow can work with the NMAP box. I also know from many of my colleagues who still teach that they are using the NMAP box um, in their teaching lessons because it's quite convenient as you have this um, GIS applications available with the NMAP box. Um, in the latest release of the NMAP box, which is 3.7, uh, which was released last year, we all also provide a reader, not only for simulated NMAP data, but also for Prisma L2D data and DESIS L2A data. Um, which I think might be quite interesting for this community. Um, so the tools that are um, available in the box is, um, it's, a, it's, it's basically a user-friendly GUI for data handling. It applies state-of-the-art applications and also extension points um, for many users. And it offers the full GIS functionality which I think makes it uh, quite handy um, for many applications. The tools and application which are already in the box, and this is kind of an ongoing process. So basically it, um, there are more and more applications um, coming for the box. Uh, so it has everything from a classical um, classifier to regression-based unmixing tools. Um, you can also import uh, spect already existing spectra libraries, um, handle and label your spectra, um, and also have the possibility um, of, uh, of proper visualization. We also offer an agricultural application tool with a radio transfer modeling and also um, the analysis of soil and mineralogical maps are now possible. Um, as I said, it's an ongoing process. So basically, um, all the algorithms which are developed within the sign projects are um, at the end of those projects included in the NMAP box as well. Um, and as I said, it's also, um, it has a lot of programming interfaces and extension points. 
So it has an API um, and makes it um, also very interesting for already advanced users who are interesting to program their own workflow. Um, so this is possible in the box as well. It's uh, all programmed in uh, Python, as this is, of course, the language of the Cubis box. Um, everything that is included in the box comes with the, with the README file and uh, proper documentation in read the docs. Um, there you also have um, the possibility to download um, some example data and have like basically easy exercises when you're just getting started with the NMAP box. So you can have like a self-learning tutorial or um, if you're interested, um, the NMAP box team also um, has regular workshops um, for also now international workshops um, where you can get in, get input and um, get input and learn the first steps with the box. Um, the last workshop was I think three months ago and that was the first international one as it was online and I think we had around 140 participants from all over the world. So that was quite a success. Um, any further information on the NMAP box can be also find on the NMAP homepage. Um, in respect to education and training, I already said that the NMAP box is used also for some of the, for some of the, uh, teaching, um, especially on, uh, in German universities but that we also had already a quite intensive PhD uh, program. And this, um, let's say, um, we think that, that education and training is quite important for the hyperspectral community to also um, spread the use of hyperspectral data yeah. for um, young, young remote sensing scientists. So as the next step, what we did in this uh, education and training program was having uh, HyperEDU, which is the NMAP Education Initiative. So it's an online learning resource for hyperspectral remote sensing. So it started out to have uh, learning material basically on hyperspectral remote sensing, in particular on NMAP, but we're now focusing really on the broad um, or on a wider hyperspectral uh, remote sensing learning for the whole community. Um, all the science projects which uh, were funded by the DLR were so nice and already provided um, input material for this online learning courses, where you, which range from basically annotated uh, slide collection to um, coming up MOOCs. Um, so this is also a program that is ongoing and just getting extended more and more. You can find HyperEDU on the EO College platform, which I think is one of the largest online learning platforms. Um, when you're registered there, you can just already have a look at the, at the um, already existing material. And this gives you also an idea which material is, is still to be found and to be produced. So what you can find already is basically um, uh, res uh, I think it's an annotated slides from um, giving an introduction in hyperspectral remote sensing, but there you can also find, for example, an introduction in the NMAP box as well. So this is our newest development, which is also, um, I think, quite quickly growing. And I think the team is, is doing a great job to um, forward this already in the community. In case there uh, is a question that cannot be answered now, feel also free to um, write me an email or also the science uh, PI Sabine Chaprila. And there's also a contact uh, form on the NMAP homepage in case you have further questions to the NMAP box or something else that is related to the mission. And with that, I want to thank you for your attention. Thanks, Anke.
Uh, thanks a lot for all the information. I already signed uh, uh, at least two questions, uh, uh, both for you and also Jennifer and Marco. But uh, I leave the floor to Ettore uh, because I think that it's, it's good to have all the three presentations in a row before starting the short discussion and, qu and question and answer. So. 